All right, I wanna show you uh, how to draw the front view of your cabinet. This will kind of have some overlap with that introduction video I did, but for a nightstand project, we'll show you the front view here. And I'm gonna start by drawing the overall shape of the project. Now this is gonna be the size of the box or the case, not including the top overhang. So I'm gonna pick a spot, it doesn't matter where, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag the pencil. I have clicked and let go. I'm gonna drag it the direction I wanna go. When it's red, that looks good. That means it's nice and straight. And I'm gonna type the size I want it to be. Today, we're gonna to draw the example nightstand that we have used uh, for building the class demonstration. So that's 12 inches wide. So I'm gonna type 12, enter, and it snaps into a 12 inch long line. I'm gonna continue my pencil tool down. I'm gonna go 28 inches high and you can see it's appearing in the length box in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm nice and green, that means I'm straight, so I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna come back over 12 inches and back up to the top. Now this is kind of zoomed out. I wanna see this full screen the best I can, so I'm gonna hit zoom, extents. That's this one up here, zoom with the three arrows. Go ahead and click that. It will zoom into your all your drawings and make them as large as possible. So if there was more drawings, it would be smaller because it would show all of your components. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and draw the face frame. So I'm gonna take the pencil, I'm gonna come in, styles run top to bottom. So I'm gonna start with my styles, I'm gonna click in the corner and pull the pencil the direction I wanna go. I wanna go to the right, doesn't matter how far, I can pull all the way to the corner, I could go to the midpoint, somewhere in between. Doesn't matter how far you move your pencil after you've clicked. And I'm gonna type in the size. Now typically a face frame is an inch and a half or two inches. So for today's example, we're gonna use an inch and a half. So I'm gonna type 1.5, enter. Now I'm gonna come back and find that green node right along the top, there it is. I'm gonna click it and drag it down, straight down. It's green again, that means we're straight. I'm gonna come in from the other side. This time, I'm gonna enter in one and a half again, but I'm gonna enter it in a different format. So I'm gonna put one space, one divided by two. You can either enter it decimal format or fraction format, it doesn't matter, either way. And I'm gonna hit enter, and again, come back and find my green line and pull it straight down. We're gonna start with our top rails. We've got three rails we're gonna put in. The top rail first, come down an inch and a half. Typically, whatever you draw your styles, typically the rails are the same, but they don't have to be. But typically, if you don't really have a preference or a need, just make them all an inch and a half. Okay, now I'm gonna to come to the bottom. Our bottom rail is thicker than the rest of the rails because we're gonna have a three inch foot or trim that covers the base of the project, some base trim. And so, three inches gets covered up, but we still want an inch and a half of face frame left over when we're done. So three plus an inch and a half is four and a half. We're gonna make our bottom rail to four and a half inches. There it is, I'm gonna pull it over to the side. Looks good. Now we need to create our center rail for our drawer opening. So I'm gonna come up here to the top, click, I'm gonna pull it down the direction I wanna go and put six inches. I'm gonna do a standard six inch opening for this drawer. Pull it across. Now I'm gonna come down an inch and a half to create the bottom edge of that center rail. So now you can see we've got three rails and two styles drawn in. Now when we draw our plans, we are only drawing the openings. I do not wanna see any doors or drawers drawn in these openings. So I'm gonna click on them and delete them. That way uh, we can clearly see that there's nothing there. We can use our paint bucket tool to paint these. So if we click on the paint bucket tool, you can find uh, your, paint, uh, your paints. You might have to click on um, the, the brick up here and then from the down menu, select colors and model to see the preloaded wood grain. I'm gonna click up and down for the wood grain here, and I'm gonna paint my up and down pieces and my side to side pieces with the other one. 
So all my grains, oops, that doesn't look right. So all my grains are running correctly. You can modify your grain a little bit if you don't like the way it's looking. Maybe it's too, too wide of a grain. You could come down here and change the size of that. Maybe a 60 inch grain would look a little bit better. See so how we got some more characteristics or details in that grain by changing that. It's up to you, you don't have to, you can leave it at its default setting. All right, so we've got our wood grain on. Now we're gonna start dimensioning it. Actually, we're not quite done with the drawing, we need to add the top. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can add the top on here. Now typically, uh, on a nightstand size project, we would do an overhang of a, a inch and a half. So our project's gonna have an inch and a half overhang, 1.5, off of each side. And our material is gonna be about 7 eighths of an inch thick when we're done sanding it through the wide belt sander. So I'm gonna come off an inch and a half and up 7 eighths. So let's do this to the left side. Off 1.5, up 0.875 or 7 eighths. And now I have that off each side. Now I just connect the dots across and there is my top. Now for today, I'm gonna to leave that blue just so I can see the difference that there's a, a line there. I don't get confused with the extra wood grain uh, that might be in there. So I've got my overhang, um, I've got my openings. Now we need to dimension everything. So we're gonna dimension everything with the dimension tool, which is the three at an angle. So I'm gonna click the three at an angle. You might find it over here in the large tool set as well. And I'm gonna start clicking on things to dimension them. I'm gonna click on two different points and pull the dimension out. If I dimension it in one spot, I don't need to do it in another. So I did nine right there. I don't need to come down here and do nine here as well because they're the exact same thing and I don't need to do that. But I do need the height of this one because that is different than the top one. I wanna make sure when I'm dimensioning, I put some gap in between so I can clearly tell where the dimension starts and stops. Okay, I would not wanna put my size right here and put that all in line because now I can't see where the 14 and a half stops. Does it go to here? Does it go up to here? Does it go all the way to the top? We don't know. So we're gonna just make sure that we would offset things a little bit so that you can tell where those start and stops are. Showed you in the other video how to make this inch and a half not look so claustrophobic in there. We're gonna control click on a Mac or right click on a PC and choose start or end. It doesn't matter, whatever way you started drawing it's what's gonna determine this. So that one looks good. If it would've kicked it up here in the nine and a half, I probably would've redone it and moved it to the bottom. That way we don't have uh, things overlapping. Now here, we're kind of at a crossroads. We really don't have a choice but to have these two overlap and that's okay. But we wouldn't wanna have things that we can control overlap when they don't need to. I'm gonna finish dimensioning this out won't take long here if you want to just follow along. Again, these ones that are really kind of claustrophobic, I'm going to move out. See, that didn't look good. That put the dimension in here where you can't really see it. So I will do that again and choose the other option. Okay, we dimensioned one side of the overhang. We don't need to do the other because they're going to be the same. I'm going to dimension the overall size of the project. I'm going to dimension the height of the project. Okay, you can see the bigger dimensions should be out further than the smaller dimensions, just to kind of keep things big, or to keep things uh, cleaned up. We don't want any lines crossing that don't need to be. Four and a half, put that there. And then we would need to label this. So I told you as we were drawing, we have two styles. So I'm gonna take this A1 tool right up here on the top, and this is how we're going to label things. I'm gonna have a leader arrow that points to what I wanna talk about. I'm gonna click right in the middle of that. And then I just click off to the side, which way I have it. And I'm gonna type, these were styles. So S-T-I-L-E is this kind of style. 
and I'm going to mark that. And I'm going to come to the other side and do the same thing. And I'm going to do down here. And I'm going to try to keep my text from overlapping those dimensions. Bottom rail. I might point way over here so my text has room. Center. I can hit enter and do two lines if I want. Center rail. And then lastly, we have our top rail. And when you're done with that tool, you can hit escape or you can simply um, click a different tool and it will let you out of there. So it looks like we have most things dimensioned and labeled so we can tell all of our parts. We will need the labelings for the cut list and cost form, which we will do probably the last step. And so we need to know what each piece is called. That's why we have to label them. All right, if you have any questions, please talk to your instructor about uh, drawing your plans. Contact me uh, via email or my number. You have those uh, available to you for class. Uh, happy drawings.